said the same thing I told ya. My eyes are clear, there's no secret. I wanna know, was it serious? Hello, I'm Ray. This is it, the brand new Asus Zenfone 4. By the way, huge thanks to ASUS for sending me not only the phone, but also this one-of-a-kind special edition package. Let's unbox it. Wow, this is indeed a gorgeous phone. For the first time ever, I totally admire the design of a Zenvo. It's beautiful, elegant, sleek, and is well-crafted, like a flagship phone. Anyway, back on the package. Oh, really appreciate it, thank you. So basically, we can expect a modernized, stylish device with unparalleled photography experience, according to ASUS. They've also mentioned there are two versions of the Zenfone 4. One ships with a relatively lower-end mid-range Snapdragon 630, but you may also pick up the maxed-out Snapdragon 660 variant. The one I've here packs a Snapdragon 630, unfortunately, but it's absolutely good to go, so back on the packaging again. Nice and handy, a review guide. But most of the time, I prefer searching for information online on both the official and third-party websites, then trying out the new phones on my own and testing them out based on the standardized review format. But this time around, we've got this a little bit early, so let's take a look at what we can expect from the Zenfone 4, from ASUS' perspective. Well, without a doubt, it's the camera. More than half of the booklets about that dual camera module. Stay tuned for more sample images later in this video. Just keep in mind that the primary lens shoots 12 megapixels photos, while the wide-angle one shoots only 8 megapixels photos, with fixed focus point. More on that in a minute. Then, as expected, they carried on describing the supposed-to-be extraordinary camera module. First of all, that massive 1 over 2.55-inch CMOS sensor, but squeezing only 12 megapixels in it, each pixels measured at 1.4 micron. Together with a wide f1.8 aperture, light sensitivity is up to 5 times more than ordinary smartphone cameras, while 4x's optical image stabilization allows shutter speed up to a quarter of a second, even in auto mode. We've also got quite a few more modes which might be gimmicky for the majority of the users. Boom, super resolution mode. But does it really help lift up the image quality though? We'll come back to this in a minute. Oh, finally, they've moved away from the camera. Yep, the Zenfone 4 has got DTS headphone support. It can simulate an impressive 7.1 channels surround sound effect. After that, we've got the full specifications of the Zenfone 4. Just leave that for the full review. But what's more, they've also included a clear plastic case right inside the box. You're right, just a generic, cheap plastic case. But sometimes less is more, especially when it comes to phones with such an amazing, sophisticated design. Alright, before we throw away the box, don't forget the wall adapter as well. Unfortunately, the Snapdragon 630 variant here supports only 5V 2A, which is 10W charging. The one with the Snapdragon 660, however, does support quick charging. You get what you pay for. Oh, USB Type-C cable for sure. And finally, for real, the earbuds. In hard shape, lovely. The packaging's really impressive. Again, huge thank you to ASUS. Now, time for the Zenfone 4. It's the absolute best looking Zenfone ever, not one of the, as they've finally managed to ditch the camera bump while maintaining the essential optical image stabilization module. The crazy responsive and quick fingerprint sensors also on the front. There's literally nothing on the back, just the iconic concentric metallic brushed pattern and the reflection of the glass. Beautiful. It's also worth a mention that this midnight black's actually deep sea blue, while the flares and the reflections shine like nothing else on the market. But the dark color scheme helps it remain low profile. Yep, time to check out the camera. It is another phone with a dual camera setup, but the logic behind it is nothing alike to the iPhone. The LG G6 instead, the secondary lens captures a whopping 120 degrees field of view, while the 25mm primary lens captures a field of view of 83 degrees, and is on a par with those flagship phones that double the price on papers. 
again the IMX362 image sensor, with the aid of the newly added RGB sensor and the wider than before f1.8 aperture. It should be able to capture bright images under all lighting conditions, with accurate colors. And this time around, not only has it got 4-axis optical image stabilization, but also an addition of 3-axis electronic image stabilization for video recording. On papers, the Zenfone 4 has got one of the best cameras out there. What amazed me, however, is not those hardware, is the new camera app. Yep, the Pro mode. We can manually set the exposure time up to 32 seconds, and ISO as low as 25. The focus, exposure and white balance can also be adjusted manually. Apart from the Pro mode, the Zenfone 4 has got probably all the features that we can think of. Even GIF recording, that's rare even on flagship phones. Then the super resolution mode we've come across earlier. The image is noticeably sharper and crisper, but the difference in the details captured is barely distinguishable. Slow motion, however, is not a surprise. It captures 240fps slow motion footage in 720p like a flagship phone, but you can always dial that back to 120 frames per second for sharper details in 1080p. The wide-angle lens in the meantime is pretty straightforward. It's a 12mm lens that captures 8 megapixels images with 120 degrees of field of view. It's not necessarily a zoom lens, but ASUS managed to simulate the bokeh effect using only the primary standard lens. The trade-off is, it's not detecting the distance between each layer of objects optically, but human faces instead. It does blur out the background aggressively, but the effect's kinda unusable. And it only works when you're shooting portrait. I don't mean portrait. It's not a universal bokeh mode. Move on to the wide-angle lens. Shooting on the wide-angle lens like moving two steps backwards compared to the standard lens. It's not as impressive as LG's 125 degrees field of view, but 120 still captures way more information than a standard smartphone camera. Stay tuned for my full view for more sample images. And before we end this video, the Zen UI is also noticeably smoother, lighter, and more mature than before. It carried all those crazy personalization settings from older generations Zen UI, while the interface still mainly follows the outdated Android 6.0 style, but the font, icons, and the color scheme of the entire interface have been modernized and are way more unified. It is one of the better looking interfaces out there, with insane amount of features and customization settings, like its features packed like a Huawei and OnePlus, but with a way more appealing and unique chassis design. At the end of the day, I've been using it for about two days time. My first impression is beautiful, delicate and stylish. We can tell it's a Zenfone from both the hardware and software, but they are refined to a whole new level with a magnificent dual camera system. Costing way less than half of a Note 8, it is indeed a remarkable mid-ranger. Stay tuned for my full view for the battery life test, speed test, and of course, a deeper look at that camera.